This is a Mr. G production. Whoosh. Hey, everybody. It's Mr. G again. Back for another week. Sorry to have you staring at a blank sheet of paper right now, but I'm going to get started right away. This lesson is one of my favorites to teach, but it goes along with a really, really cool story. So let me get started. Now, for those who know the story already, many of you kids know the story. You can't tell your families. You gotta let them, if they're watching this, figure it out for themselves. I know it's tempting, you're gonna wanna tell them, but don't. And if you're watching for the first time, enjoy this process, because it's a really great way to learn how to draw what we're gonna draw for this project. And it starts off with imagining that you're a bird looking down over a dirt road. So you're a bird, so you're looking down, a bird's eye view. I'm gonna draw nice and scribbly here to show you. These edges don't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of drawing them. So this is a dirt road, I'm a bird. Flying, looking down over the road, and the, at the end of the road, there's a little, a little, a little boy standing there, and he's standing there. He gets to the end of the road. He's walking down the path, and he goes, "Which way do I go?" Imagine a little person is standing there with his head up in the air, and he's going, "Hey, which way do I go?" Because he's right in the middle. He doesn't know where to go. The road ends. So we have a choice. We're going to use this person to help point us where we're going to go. We can either go that way, which then would continue that way, that way. And then this one, he's pointing this way, so let's continue it that way. Notice, each time that road, when it split, it just kind of split in half. So then, hmm, he has two new roads to go down. Let's figure this out. Well, he's gonna try this road this time. This road's a little bit narrower than the original road, probably about half the width. And this time, he's gonna stand towards the side of this new road over here. Why? Because he felt like it, because I felt like you're putting it there. And this generates two new roads. So that pointing helps us to make new roads. Now let's using a counting system that I work with the kids. I draw the letter V somewhere in the end of this path representing the split. And then I count one, two, three, four. Now notice what I did there is I didn't, when I split it, let me try it again and demonstrate something that you have to be careful of. If I put my V in here, I don't want to necessarily close my roads. No, no, no. I want to leave it open. So as I talk about this road, I want to be able to keep going down the road. Even though if it's narrow enough just for one person, I want to keep the road going. Now what if I decided I wanted a new road right here, a side road, a ride that wasn't, road that wasn't there yet. I could actually just erase a piece of it and add a new road. So now that original road has a new road. A little not narrow road, maybe for two people. This was wide enough for a bunch of cars. And then we're gonna continue in using that counting system. Now, what do I do if I get to a point where there's no room for a person, or in this case, the V? Well, it doesn't mean I'm done with my road. It means all I have to do is widen it to make some room, drop the V or person in there, and then one, two, three, four. And I think by now you kind of know from the images over there are what we're doing here. We are creating trees using basic dividing methods here, just dividing using the V. So you get to the end of my road, I draw a V, one, two, three, four. If I wanted to, I could even curve the roads. So if I had a V here, I could make this road curve a little bit. And then maybe this one curves that way. But then what's gonna happen, oh, oh no, what happens if two of these paths, or now we know branches, I just told you, go near each other? Well, guess what? They can go behind one another, and that's called overlapping. Because in real life, things overlap. Things cross in front of another. And that's basically the uh, method here that just keeps repeating. So I just keep adding my Vs until I'm happy, and keep counting to myself, one, two, three, four. So V, one, two, three, four. Now also notice, each time, the path, or in this case, the tree, grows another road or branch, it gets narrower each time. Because in nature, that is what is happening. It's bringing those nutrients to the extremities, the far ends of the, of the little skinniest branches where the leaves live. Now right now, we're not gonna focus so much on details of leaves. It was more about understanding this process here. And one more thing I'm gonna show you here before we move on, I'll show you some examples. And this is level one video, so this is the basics of understanding how to start with a, a, a wide path and divide it into smaller paths, how to erase in order to make it 
different. If I wanted to put a new branch over as if it's coming from in front of the tree, erase that, erase that piece of branch or the side of the uh, trunk, which is the big base of the tree part, and add it in front. Where this one, I could have coming from behind. You can see that's behind that one, that's in front. And then the easiest way at this point now, once you get the hang of it, is to really just add some foliage if you want to. Now you could simply just have branches kind of just fading out to nothingness, which is fine, because a lot this time of year, some trees you know, don't have branches on or have leaves on them. But you could also use the, like they call it like the cloud technique. I kind of bring back around, especially when the, on the level one, it makes it a lot more fun to do it this way, and then later be able to come back and add all the other details. So I'm just gonna quickly finish this up to show you the method of doing that. Boom, boom, so simple, so simple. There we got a little happy little tree, a la um, happy little tree man, Bob Ross. And now I have my tree standing there. I could add my line for my horizon line if I wanted to. I could add maybe some sort of, something like give me, this could be water. There could be mountains in the back, who knows. And then if I wanted to leave it simply like that, I could. I can color it. If I happen to have paint, I can paint it. If I have markers, I can marker it. And I wanna show you a few examples of things that are done in different ways so you understand from level one what you can do. So one more thing, let me point out. I wanna show you how to put this larger uh, branch coming off of the trunk in front of this one. It involves one line. All I'm gonna do is take this line and put it in front of that one. And that made that one, the, appear to be in front of that one called overlapping. And I can continue that method through many of my branches here to give this drawing a sense of depth and dimension, which it helps make things look 3D. So now I, I said I was gonna show you some examples. This is just the basic tree color, however you want. This is uh, something very basic here. It's a same concept here, I drew a tree. And I recreated it again and simply used just crayons. These are only crayons, there's no other material used here. If you're curious at how I made the white, that's just not coloring the paper in that spot, leaving the paper alone, coloring around it. And I had fun doing that because crayons are a lot of fun. And if you notice, there's lots of different colors inside the tree, especially in the greens. It's not just green, there's yellows, there's a little bit of blue. The mountains have different variations of browns. So if you have a crayon box, you can kind of make any color you want. That's using crayons. Um, this one here, I'll show you here is using the same method. I drew the tree. I colored the tree using, in this case, Crayola markers. I use Crayola markers specifically because I wanna show you what you can do with them. Because many of us, including myself, do not have paint at home. Like, I don't have quality paint here. So, I'm gonna use my Crayola markers and I'm gonna do this as careful as I can because I don't wanna drip all over everything. But I'm gonna show you and you'll understand after I show you. Take my brush and water. Now again, you might not have Crayola markers so you can just skip this. But if you do, this is a good way to explore. Now I'm holding it upright, which you should not do. You should have yours down on a table, but I don't wanna do that right now and end up uh, possibly dripping all over the place or um, getting my table wet. So I wet my brush, tickle, tickle, tickle with water. And what's really great is just using water, you can paint. And what it does is it liquefies the marker that's there. As you can see, it wants to drip a little bit already, that's fine. And it turns it to a paint. And what's great about that is that you can add that beautiful looking tree texture simply with whatever you use to use, do your magic marker with. I can do the same with the green grass. Just color stop left to right. And it blends, as you see, the white spots of the paper are filling in with marker color. So whatever the marker color is, We'll fill in those gaps and clean the brush between colors and then the blues, the blues, the blue the same way. You notice I'm doing them separate um, colors at a time because I don't want them to mix together. And I'm gonna leave this like this for now, but oh, one more thing I'll show you is up here. Is just by swirling now these three, I have yellow and blue together, excuse me, yellow and green together. Whoop, whoop, I don't to drip. I'm able to create these beautiful painterly effects that usually are only achieved through paint, but yet we're using magic marker. So you can see how you can do that, and, and it can make a really fun way to do that. Um, this is one that was done 
by a student and just outlined with black marker. So it's very cartoony, but I think really cool looking. I don't know if they finished it, but I had to show you. And this is one here that was simply black marker, Crayola black, and the lines were wet. That's it. They didn't spend a lot of time wetting the lines. They just went over each one. You could even see the brush strokes. And then science happened and it's, it made the water bleed the ink. Not bleeding, like real bleeding, but bleeding like marker ink and it bleeds outwards and it gives a beautiful painterly effect. Very, very cool looking. So for now, I wanted you to just hear the story of the person walking down the path. The path divides and then keeps dividing. If you don't, um, couldn't you know, follow it, go back, rewind and watch each step and you'll see for yourself how easy it is once you get past the first step, how easy it is to keep continuing the process. It was nice seeing you for this level one video of drawing trees or sprouting foundations, as I call it. And um, if you get through this and you're looking for a challenge, um, go to level two and then you're gonna see some really cool other ways of looking at um, embellishing trees using textures and designs and other things that you might have around the home as well. Have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Hope you enjoyed it. Oh, also check out the video of me sketching, sketching with Mr. G. I did that outside. You'll see how I draw things from real life. Um, and uh, that's fun to do also. In fact, uh, here's one right here. I can show you real quick. This is one I did um, from real life. I didn't finish it yet. You can see I was looking at the actual trees in the, sh in the shade. It's just pencil. But same concepts, I just basically proved my own theory by doing that. I wanted to see, does it really divide the way I said it? In this case, it did. So I was very happy to see that tree and make it part of my artwork. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you later on, and I miss you all.